Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Deborah Durst, and I am a double board certified physician that now specializes in anti-aging and regenerative medicine. As a return viewer of the channel, I want to thank you for always listening and being loyal. If you are new to the channel, then I hope you like the content we're putting out. If you do, please hit the like and subscribe and leave us comments on anything you might want to hear more about because we are willing to deep dive into anything sexual wellness or wellness. Welcome back to the RMD podcast. So today we are going to answer the question, what is HRT versus bioidentical HRT? I was recently reading a book and again, you know, she has written many books on sex and she was on the diary of a CEO. So, you know, watch that podcast and then um, I read her latest book, which is Great Sex Starts at 50. And again, we can I can get into the book yep. details later, but there was one. Oh, I'm aspect. sure there'll be a podcast to break that down because there is Just, a lot with yeah, that one. To break it down for sure. Because, and again, but she's not a physician. She does a lot of books on sex and reads, you know, a lot. So from that standpoint, having written a lot of books and being a sex educator and talking about the changes that people go through as they age or women go through, um, I thought it was interesting that she separated out HRT from natural remedies from bioidentical. So, yeah, so let's unpack that, as they say. Correct. I think it's a very simple, because again, if she's writing books, he's got a lot of followers and they're listening and go to read her book, it does raise the question of you know, something that's very simple, right? Mm -hmm. So what is HRT? Right. First. Hormone replacement therapy. Yes. So Plain basically, that's all that means is hormone replacement therapy. I think in her book, she's really describing more or less manufactured versions of bioidentical, I think. So, so not very clear. Correct. So HRT is hormone replacement therapy. That's what HRT stands for. Bioidentical HRT or bioidentical hormones just means you're using hormones that are identical to what was produced in the body. It will fit the receptor like your natural hormones. That's all that means. And then be utilized as such. Correct. So the source is irrelevant and it's not a natural remedy where you're using a supplement to stimulate hormone production. You are replacing with a hormone that is identical to what your body produces. Yep. So when she separates out HRT, historically HRT in the U.S., and again, she's in the U.K., but I'm um, assuming the same changes probably happened mm -hmm. that early on we were using synthetic hormones that were not identical and they would not fit the receptor the same way. And that's what the WHI study was all about is the hormone replacement therapy that was synthetic. Yeah. And so... I'm assuming that she's not talking about that anymore, that she's, because most have moved away from that synthetic because, again, the WHI shut that down. You know, we're using symptom control. So we had been using synthetic hormones for symptom control, mm -hmm. and they were trying to evaluate the safety with lots of, you know, flaws in the yes. WHI. The information um, that was sent to the public after about the WHI, the fact that we did a huge disservice to women by shutting them down. Well, we shut down hormones completely, completely instead of just removing the hormones that had negative side effects, which are your synthetics. A lot of them did because they don't fit the receptor. So then the body can't receive them as their own. So they don't stay that hormone. They can break off and they can metabolize right. a little bit differently. And some of those hormones can, when they break down, can cause a little bit of havoc in the body. So that is what we want to avoid and stay away from. Correct. And even with the WHI, it, I mean, and again, that's for another podcast. It wasn't all... Even though they are synthetic and you don't need to use them, it was more the Provera, you know, the yeah. progestin that caused the issue than it was even the synthetic estrogen. But that aside, I think now we've all mainly moved away from, we still will occasionally see a patient that comes in and on a synthetic, mm -hmm. but the bioidentical part is identical, like Faraday said, it fits the receptor, your body's responding like it naturally would, not reacting to... And so, but what she's saying is there are some manufactured versions of those bioidentical. So progesterone, um, recently there was somebody that kept asking about one of the, 
brand names of um, Prometrium, maybe? Prometrium. Like, yeah. As suddenly there were like again a few patients in a row, so somebody must have been talking. There was an about article pro, or something or something on Facebook that I must, triggered. I heard it like three or four times. I'm like, it is, you know, micronized progesterone. It is bioidentical. It's yeah. just a brand name in a manufactured version by a pharmaceutical company with a more standardized dose. So that like again, progesterone bioidentical is available. Micronized, non my it doesn't matter. Like progesterone. It's it progesterone. Is, it's progesterone and bioidentical. Micronized means like a powder version of that. Mm -hmm. And so that is bioidentical. And so, again, but it's a standard. You have a 200 milligram capsule, maybe a 100 milligram, but you can't do anything in between. You can't titrate up. So when she's talking about bioidentical versus HRT, it is the same. So when she says there's studies for safety for HRT but not bioidentical and that there's clinics in the U.K. that are, you know, very busy in treating a lot of women for bioidentical. There's a reason for that because it's a more customized form of it. Yeah. So in the book, she also talks about the fact that she was on testosterone. She didn't like it. It was She had a high sex drive, and she kind of liked that that went away. And when she was on testosterone. Yeah, we're writing a book about great sex. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just Correct. Clarifying. Correct. But, well, we'll get to that yeah. book, like, kind of. We'll talk about the book a little bit more in another podcast specifically, but she did say that she didn't like having that sex drive back and that she was actually okay with that and that she wasn't as competitive like, say, uh, a fitness class. But the issue is, is that if you were doing bioidentical or a more customized form of it where it's compounded for you or pellets in you your specific can adjust dose, the dose. Yeah, just absolutely it's not a one size fits all like you're on test your libido is too high or you're not on test with no libido or a significantly decreased libido mm -hmm. again there's an in-between customized for how you feel and what you want your sex drive to be yes, right there's always a happy medium correct when you're using compounded medications yes. because it can be customized i think that's really important so it sounds like hrt bioidentical HRT she's was using not very clearly so yeah, in our world we talk about synthetic and bioidentical and we kind of just separate it out as those two things correct so and I think that is the key like so you have synthetic that's an older form no one should be using now <laughs> So you have bioidentical, you have regular doctors that might prescribe it with a prescription, you go to a regular pharmacy, that's what she's describing as HRT, mm -hmm. and more one strength, two strengths, very specific, not customizable, mm -hmm. and then you have compounded prescriptions by HRT, you know, providers or hormone replacement providers or specialists that is just more customized. Those compounding pharmacies are still FDA regulated pharmacies. Mm -hmm. it, and maybe even have, more so because of all the checks. Yeah, no, they're regulated quite highly. And mm -hmm. again, we're following levels. So we don't see, you know, side effects mm -hmm. with those that you would see with like a drug. It's not mm -hmm. a drug. It's identical to the hormones you produced. Yep. And you can do levels that actually check what your replacement is and optimize for that patient. And, and then specialize and customize dosing based on those levels and based by symptoms. Correct. And there is lots of support for hormone replacement optimization of both men and women and the safety related to it. And so really what we're talking about is old, synthetic, bad. Mm -hmm. Bioidentical is the way to go. And you either get a prescription and you go to a regular pharmacy, but not many primary care doctors or GYN mm -hmm. doctors are doing that well. And you can't customize it and, like her experience, adjust the testosterone so she enjoys the level and physiologic symptoms or yeah. improvement in symptoms that she's having. Or you go to compounded medicine or pellets or implants. You know, there's yep. different ways. But bioidentical is HRT, proven safe. It's just a more customized version because it's compounded by a pharmacy for the most part. For the most so, part. I mean, even bioidentical, we could write a prescription and it could be something picked up at a regular pharmacy. Yep. Again, you just have no way of customizing that dose for the You're patient. stuck to the manufacturer values of yes. what that medication is. 
Correct. And so, but that's mm-hmm. still bioidentical and safe. Yep. So again, HRT and bioidentical should be one in the same yes. because they should all be bioidentical. Now, progesterone is progesterone. Provera, progestin is not progesterone. Birth control, if it doesn't say progesterone, it is not bioidentical. Estrogen, estradiol is the estrogen replacing. If it doesn't say that, it's yep. not bioidentical. If it's a birth control that doesn't say estradiol or progesterone, it is not bioidentical. And so, and I think that's a very important distinction. We're either synthetic or we're bioidentical. Synthetic typically is coming from a CVS, a Walgreens, more likely coming from there. Um, you're not getting synthetics from compounding pharmacies. It'd be very unlikely. Correct. And you can get bioidentical from regular pharmacies. But just think when we're talking about women's hormones specifically, Progesterone is bioidentical, so if it has progesterone, even if it's micronized before, if it's estradiol, estriol, but estradiol is the main one, it's Mm -hmm. bioidentical. If they come by different names or have something weird after it, it's not. And then testosterone, Mm -hmm. again, is testosterone when it's just testosterone. And so those are bioidentical. That is what you Mm -hmm. want. And... So they're safe, and they've proven to be safe, but again, they've customized to you and followed closely. So hopefully that all makes sense. And clears up some questions clears some of up you some might have questions. had. Yeah, so, and then I think diving into, you know, great sex at any age, and maybe yeah. not just great sex starting at 50, because I definitely do not think that that's the topic of that book. Um, yeah. So, but it could be that sex changes at 50 that seems to be more the topic of the book and great sex at any age would be the topic to go with right so well if you ask any of our listeners that is anyhow so why don't you like and subscribe share with friends Mm -hmm. and let us know if you want to hear about anything specific because we're willing to deep dive into anything sexual wellness